And then it hit me that that paralyzing sort of panicky kind of fear of like, okay, I've got five files to write tonight. I've got five more inspections tomorrow. I've got five more inspections Friday. Then I've got Saturday to write 10 more files. I'm still five miles down right now. And I was just like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And I kind of like had breakfast, got a coffee, sat down, started to write and realized I'm not going to write this nearly as fast in my mind as I thought. <laughs> Try to only, you know, scope what you can write that day and just, you know, try it on one. I mean, just, you know, do your normal thing, but, you know, give yourself three hours on one of them or however long, if you added up the time it takes you to scope and the time it takes you, you think it should take you to write without distractions and give yourself that window and then sit there in the insurance driveway and write it up oh, and see what happens. This is Adjuster TV. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Paysetter Claim Service. Learn more at adjustertv.com slash paysetter and by e &O provider Kaplik. Download the free insurance for adjusters guide at cplic.net slash adjuster TV and by the Illinois-based IA firm Hausch & Company. For daily claims and cat deployments, go to hauschco.com and click on join our team. Let them know that Adjuster TV sent you. Hey, what's up? Matt here with Adjuster TV. And for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, won't you subscribe to my channel? So I'm here today with uh, Thomas Moretzky. Did I say that correctly, sir? Moretzky, yes, sir. Awesome. So, and and Thomas is, uh, he's he's got some questions and we're going to kind of drill down a little bit, I think, into um, some some technical stuff in the claims workflow. Um, but Thomas, why don't you kind of uh, give us a little bit of your background, who you are, where you're from, um, and then kind of sure. like, kind of kick off what, what we want to talk about. All right. Uh, so originally I'm from Canada, born in uh, Winnipeg and grew up in Southern California. My dad said it was too cold up there and uh, moved us down to SoCal. And that's where I kind of grew up in my early years. And then, um, ended up moving to texas back in 2006 in san antonio and uh it's kind of warm here but um it's a really nice place <laughs> other than that uh certainly uh a, a, a change of pace from from canada but um i was in it for a number of years probably a good two decades worth uh and then transitioned out of that and wanted to get back out of a cubicle and out of the office and into the great outdoors, which is what I prefer. And so I, uh, I picked up, um, a, a kind of jumped into uh, project management with a roofing company back in 2018, did that for a couple of years. Of course, one of the things that uh, was drilled into us at that time was make sure you make every adjuster meeting, right? uh that that's that, that's something that you don't miss um and so i just kind of made it a habit every time that uh an adjuster we filed a claim you know i told the homeowner i will move heaven and earth on my calendar to make that meeting so you make sure and you let me know when the adjuster's coming um and in the course of doing that one the other thing that told us uh when i was working for that company for that roofing company was the adjuster's in the driver's seat. Um, you don't tell him what to do. You don't tell him anything. You 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 uh, defer to his opinion, to his judgment, and you can disagree respectfully and politely. But um, it's always it's never, hey, this is hail. Uh, it's what do you think of this, right? And let the adjuster. So that's the way I was I was taught as a project manager in roofing to uh, to conduct those adjuster meetings. Um, but I got to talk to, and of course, building rapport with the adjusters, um, in hopes that they would, of course, buy the roof. Um, and I got to talking to them about adjusting. Uh, I really kind of, um, envied their process, uh, in, in the fact that the cycle for them was pretty much show up that day, do the inspection, write the claim and you're done, get paid. Uh, for me, that cycle was much longer, uh, anywhere from four to eight weeks from the time that the job was started from, from knocking on the door and setting the appointment to collecting the final depreciation and then settling up with the homeowner. Uh, so a much longer cycle granted it was a, a larger payout, but if you were working hundred percent commission, then that didn't tend to really work out. Eventually, 
uh, in March of 2020, I started my own business and went out under roofing. And it was uh, January 2021. So, I mean, that was the year of the pandemic, uh, which was not a great time to start a business. However, uh, we did have some storms here in San Antonio, some hail. So I was able to work off of that and actually was pretty successful that year. Um, and then kind of like I do every year after New Year's, it's like, what am I going to do this year? Uh, how am I going to, you know, structure my life for the next 365 days? And uh, I thought at the time, January 2021, I would like to do more metal roofs. And um, but I'd always had an eye on doing adjusting. So uh, didn't really think of it at that moment. But then I literally was looking on Craigslist for sheet metal install crews or something. I mean, it was just so I didn't even know where to begin looking at. Uh, I came across a, a gentleman who was offering free Xactimate training. And I thought, well, if it's free, it's for me. And uh, I gave him a worth call. What you paid for it. And uh, yeah. So, uh, of course, I always immediately had my suspicions, like, how do you offer something this valuable for nothing, right? Um, and came to find out that where he made his money was on the back end when uh, he had all the, he was a 17-year adjuster, um, and he had sort of stepped back and he was helping his wife who had the active adjuster licensing he would write files for her and then he wanted to kind of pass along what he knew and and uh you know get more adjusters in um and then also in the process of teaching he would uh get a cut of those files that he would provide for us for his his uh students so to speak um and uh that was january 2021 i finished the about two weeks into the one month training, uh, snowmageddon happened and, uh, here in Texas and, uh, oh, yes. <laughs> uh, he came up, he actually resides full-time in Mexico and then comes up for storms. Um, and, uh, and, and in the process he came to Houston and so had said, Hey, I'm going to be up in Houston running some interior water claims, et cetera come on out and see, you know, what it's all about. So I went down there for about three days and watched them scope and realized that uh, scoping busted pipes and ceilings on the floor in the living room was a whole lot different than, you know, doing a 20 minute run around to the outside of the house for a hail claim. A um, lot more interior, a lot more work. And the volume that he was teaching us about where, you know, I want you to run eight to 10 claims a day and uh, write them all that night. And, you know, it just wasn't going to happen. And, uh, and it was clear, even he was, you know, hadn't run into a storm like that before either. And he was probably maybe at three, possibly four claims a day. That's it. Right. Um, but it was a good experience. And, uh, like I said, I got to meet him. So then, uh, Ida happened. And, uh, in the meantime, that summer, I also picked up, uh, a gig with uh, cross country adjusting. Uh, and okay. so that was sort of my entry foray into proper bona fide adjusting. And I had my license and, uh, uh, they had me running mobile home claims all around sort of the South Texas area. Um, it was a good way to get experience. Um, although it was all in civility, uh, I had trained for a month in Xactimate and then the first job I get was nothing but civility. Of course. Um, so <laughs> But I mean, we had played a little bit around with stability, but then every claim I did. So after a while, I mean, I didn't complain. It, it was actually pretty interesting. It's got some things to it that that are actually a little bit better in some ways than, than Xactimate. But now I have experience in both. Um, and I continued, but it wasn't enough. The volume of claims wasn't enough, right? And I didn't have the background or the experience to be able to go to. I tried applying to multiple IA firms, Pace Setter, uh, probably all cat. I don't remember. There's a few others. Want to work from home? I thought that might get your attention. I'll cut to the chase here and tell you that the IA firm Paysetter Claim Service frequently has work from home opportunities for the field and also for desk work, which let's be honest, really just means work at home in your PJs. Still want to work in the field though? Paysetter's Evo platform is fully integrated with Hover. It is the best of the app-based claims handling systems out there right now. 
Technology is moving faster than ever and Pavesetter is right there at the cutting edge. We put together a free guide to maximizing your productivity while working at home in your pajamas, along with a link to apply to this dynamic firm. And you can find both at adjustertv.com slash Pacesetter. And uh, I got some feedback in terms of, hey, would you like to do scoping, you know, Evo claims for Pacesetter or something. And so, but I never heard from them again, even after I completed their, their paperwork, et cetera. Um, and uh, just continue to run claims for cross, cross country, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to live on. So I kind of continued roofing at the same time. I, the, the calls kept coming in, so I just kept taking the jobs. Uh, but then Ida happened and that was kind of my first um, hurricane, uh, big storm. And I watched your video on uh, how, how basically not to get eaten alive in your first storm. Yeah. Um, and it, it definitely, I mean, the way that you described, you know, going in, going to the help room, kind of just focusing mm -hmm. on that first claim, getting it closed and done complete the way that they want it, um, made a lot of sense to me and did not, I mean, that was contrary to what I was taught by my mentor, uh, by the guy that trained us. Um, he was all about, you know, is all about volume let's get sure. it done make hay while the sun shines get all your inspections done you can write at night you can't inspect in the dark um but i think that there was a certain level of assumptions on his part as far as how coming from from a 17 year veteran to someone like myself just getting into it um to give you an idea we got to to new orleans and uh, we were set up in lafayette and i got my first well, i had to wait, wait a week for my license um because i had something on that popped on my record from like 30 years ago um of course it was a misdemeanor but i had to explain that you know it, it was <laughs> yeah. gonna red flag yeah, and so i had to sit there for a week yeah just had to wait so um but it finally came through and uh, I mean, I had an active, active Texas license, so I went through those same hoops with them. Um, but then I got those first 25 claims. And that's where, you know, his, his involvement in this process, why I decided to, to work with him was that he had all the, the IA company contacts and he would work with three or four at a time uh, and get as many files as he could. And then he would let them know, hey, I have students. They're just starting out, but they can write quality files. And I will give them that. We did learn how to put together a proper tree. Uh, you know, we learned all about debris removal and so on and so forth. So uh, writing claims was was pretty good. But the speed at which we wrote, the, we didn't practice that much. Um, you know, we kind of went over it. So I got those first 25 and uh, he said, all right, and go. You know, so I started calling all my, my contacts, made all my my filled out my ipad calendar with all the appointments and <clears throat> as i mentioned in my email i you know I, I did the first five and i think that was on a monday where i did all my calls then tuesday was the first day of inspections drove two hours from lafayette to new orleans did the five inspections drove two hours back i was tired and it was still pretty hot uh september in new orleans is not exactly cool weather um but it was nice in any case, I was back after dark. It was 9, 9.30 at night. And I'd been up since 5.36 when I left yeah. to go make my first 8 o'clock. And now you're going to sit down and write them up. And now you're going to sit down and write. And so I thought, okay, as I'm thinking, as I'm driving back, I'm like, okay, well, at least upload the photos. You probably won't get any you know, files written, but at least you've got tomorrow off, Wednesday's off, write those five files, and then you know, wash, rinse, repeat. Um, I didn't do a darn thing when I got back uh, that <laughs> night. I I just I took Fell a shower. Bed and that was I it. took a shower. I laid down, and next thing I know, I was out. And then I woke up the next morning, and then it hit me that that paralyzing sort of panicky kind of fear of like, okay, I've got five files to write tonight. I've got five more inspections tomorrow. I've got five more inspections Friday. Then I've got Saturday to write ten more files. I'm still five miles down right now. And I was just like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And I kind of like had breakfast, got a coffee, sat down, started to write and realized I'm not going to write this nearly as fast in my mind as I thought. <laughs> um, there's a whole lot more. If you don't have the macro set up, 
um, you know, you don't know. And, and of course, every carrier I was writing for UPC at the time, they, that was who uh, we were working for. Um, UPC was the insurance company and uh, the carrier. And of course they have specific guidelines. Every carrier has got their own guidelines and right. you have to know what those are. I mean, you, you may have a macro set up for how to do a laminate roof replacement, but if that doesn't include specifically replace only on some light items or replace, you know, remove and replace uh, you have to make, you have to make those tweaks uh, based on their guidelines. And of course you're getting emails from them on probably every two or three days there's a new update to their guidelines right, right? Remember the way we update were doing it version 9.17.03 yeah it's uh, now we're doing and, the opposite and so on um but yeah that's that's what happened and i guess um you know saturday or that week rolled around that first week and i was 20 files deep and not a single one uploaded and i thought oh my god what have i done <laughs> and uh i just I, you know i i he didn't my my mentor was there we were there were six of us in the house and he was there to provide help and assistance so that was kind of my on-site help room if you will um but there's that illusion of competence that you're trying to you know i don't know put forth uh so people don't think that you're dumb or don't know what you're doing or that you are competent you know and and so I just kind of suffered silently, which was the big mistake, uh, because he told he told me later, you know, weeks we were there like week four. And, and I said, yeah, I'm 45 files back. I'm still, you know, like I'm, I'm catching up, but it's still way, way down. Well, we were going to get you 100 more files. I was like, please don't. <laughs> I mean, as much as I would love to, I just I know I can't even imagine what that would be like right now. Um and when it was done, probably in about two months time, towards the end of October, we finished up and uh, I had about 50 files under my belt and went home, um, probably made just over 30 grand, uh, which I split with him 50 50. He was entitled to the first 30 days worth of files, uh, plus accommodations and everything else. So, but I learned a lot in terms of what not to do. Yeah, not to do. I, 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 I purposed that the next time I would probably just start with two or three inspections and then kind of schedule them out every other day. Um, inspect one day, write the next inspect one day, write the next and just kind of keep it until I can get to the point where it's fluid. I'm familiar with the guidelines. I, I've got my macro set up. I can burn through it faster um and yeah that was that was it so then i came back to san antonio uh, at the end of october and uh i was told to apply to alacrity that they were looking for people in san antonio so i did they contacted contacted me right away uh asked if i would like to run claims for liberty mutual i said sure i mean say yes to everything right um, and then they changed their mind and said, we'd like you to run for USAA. And I said, that's fine. So I've been running dailies now in San Antonio since the end of October last year. Um, uh, it, it was kind of slow at first, only a couple of claims a week. And then kind of right before Christmas, this last December, uh, they asked me, my, my field manager said, Hey, are you going to be around? I said, yeah, I'll be around. I said, I got some family in town. I said, but you know, yeah, I'll be here. He goes, okay, guys, there's another guy taking uh, two weeks off. We need to, you know, send his claim somewhere. And I was like, oh, I'm sure send him my way. Right. And I, uh, it was like a Sunday night and I just happened to check my email and we were actually with the family out at an Airbnb, just kind of relaxing. And I look in my queue and there's like 13 files the week <laughs> before Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? Come on, man. It's Christmas. That's what that other guy was but, doing uh, every week. Yeah. So, uh, hey, listen, the from, toilet doesn't, you know, it doesn't know it's Christmas time. It's going to overflow no, whenever it wants no. to. I mean, these were a lot of hail claims, late season hail claims, um, you know, roofers knocking on doors, doing inspections, that yeah. kind of thing. But, uh, and it's been pretty steady since then uh, for being January. I'm, I'm, I just finished two inspections today. Uh, I got to write those up, but um, 
yeah, that's, that takes us to today. And right. um, I guess what I'm finding my biggest, one of my biggest issues is doing inspections during the day, coming home about four or five, six o'clock at night, and then uploading and writing until midnight. Right. And, and it's, it's getting to be a bit much. I'm like, okay, yeah. this feels like a cat scenario, but it's not, these are dailies. And why am I taking so long and spending so much time, you know, doing this? And um, that, that that in my mind, I imagine doing what you suggested, which is upload your photos right there in the driveway, you know, start writing that claim, et cetera, get, have it done, be wrapped up. And then by the time you get home, you're done. You have nothing left to do. And I think, wow, that would be fantastic. Just like <laughs> Matt does. <laughs> what's what's stopping you from doing that? Like, how many are you trying to do a day? And what kind of claims are they? Hail claims? Um, they're hail claims primarily, sometimes wind. Um, you know, and there's I, I schedule them about, I figure it's about an hour and a half. I, I I, I schedule them about two hours to an hour and a half apart. And I always think to myself, okay, I'm going to get there. I'm going to do my photos, make my introduction, get my elevations, get on the roof, you know, and go. Um, and sometimes it's like, I don't know, it inevitably it takes longer than I think it should. And either sometimes because there's a contractor there and I'm getting distracted, uh, which has happened a couple of times, um, you know, I don't know, I guess I'm a friendly guy, but I start talking to them and I get, I get distracted and I've, I've, for, I've gotten home before and just completely forgotten to take photos of the back slope or something. It's like, Oh my goodness, it was yeah. hammered. You know, it would have been an easy, an easy one to do. And they're not there. And it's like, okay. Uh, so I I'm constantly thinking of ways to, to speed up that process, the inspection process. Sure. Um, Okay. Like, well, I got hey, a couple ideas. Go for um, it. I'd love to hear them. So, <clears throat> um, these days there are a growing number of remote work opportunities for independent adjusters with scoper writer programs popping up all over the place. You can do photo and scope in the field, or you can just sit at home in your pajajays and write the estimates on what the scoper got when they were out in the field. And it doesn't matter where you live, as long as you have the internet, you can write claims as a desk adjuster, but you can't get that sweet gig without being licensed. So if you live in Nebraska, which doesn't require an adjuster to be licensed, you still have to have a New York license to write claims somebody scoped in New York, makes sense? Of all the credentials you need as an adjuster, there really is none more important than your adjuster license, especially your first one. You're gonna need it to do just about everything else, including some adjuster schools even require you to have one before they'll let you enroll. So you need Adjuster Pro. Adjuster Pro provides a comprehensive and easy to use way to get and maintain your adjuster licenses. Most importantly, Adjuster Pro was founded by independent adjusters and the team at Adjuster Pro is dedicated to helping you thrive as an adjuster with resources for every licensing state, including dead simple CE packages. Adjuster Pro is the gold standard for adjuster licensing. You'll find everything you need to get licensed in one place. Go to adjustertv.com slash adjuster pro right now. And how many are you trying to do a day? Like two or three? So yesterday I scheduled four uh, or no, sorry, two days ago, I scheduled four inspections for the day okay. um, and got home. I think I wrote two that night before bed and was figured that since I have 24 hours to upload them from the time the inspections complete uh, is what they want to see. Um, and uh, I'm having trouble meeting that deadline, but I think that they keep sending me files anyways, because at least the quality of my files is good. Yeah. Um, so, you know, okay. good sketches, good photo labeling, easy to follow order, good trees, all that stuff. Um, sure. So, well, I would say um, a couple of things. Um, if you're okay. one thing that always tripped me up, and made it take longer for me was if I didn't do like any claims recon beforehand. So in other words, sure. um, a claims assigned to me and I take a look at the Google aerial street view, whatever, and say, all right, well, it looks like, you know, house, 
it's a straight gable, it's one story, and they've got a one detached garage, right? Uh, which is, that's an easy one to do, right? Um, <clears throat> or, you know, as you're glancing through your loss notice, right, and it says, you know, coverage A dwelling limit is $675,000. I definitely going to Google, you know, maps and looking at that one because it might be right. 60 squares, you know, bazillion little angles everywhere. Um, and I'm going to order Eagle View on that one, 1,000%. Spend 50 bucks on it, 40, whatever it is, because um, that'll save me. Five. Ooh, yikes. Because that'll save you. Yeah, they went up. Even then, like on a big one like that, it could take, it could take me two hours to hand diagram and measure that whole thing. If, right. if you got to take your ladder down and go over to the other side and, and to get the whole thing. So it's worth, it's worth some money. I ordered $10 that. roofers, roof R's. Okay. Yeah. Uh, or, or hover. Or exact diagram for 22, which yeah. gives you the actual X. What, what is it? The ESX. The ESX. Yeah. So, and, and I would say hover is an absolutely tremendous resource because you just walk around and take eight photos of the house and it gives you the roof. I've had trouble with hover because of specifically in areas where the lot lines are next to each other and getting mm -hmm. those left and right elevations sometimes where they're sandwiched, you know, it's only 10 feet apart and you can't get yeah. like a, a good overview of the left elevation. I've had a little take lot more multiple hover pictures. fail for that reason. Yeah. Well, but, I mean, it's, you know, it, it is what it is, whatever tool you can get your hands on, sure. you know, you're, yeah. you're, you're looking at the file and it, can, and it could be that it's a simple house and they have a detached garage and three sheds and a gazebo and then 600 yards of fence, right? And you got to look at all, it's, and, and you can't really tell if the fence is painted or not, but you're going to have to go look at it and then you're at least going to have to go measure it. Um, you know, you have to take 10,000 photos of it or whatever. Um, also... You know, the more complex the claim is, even if it's just adding one or two things, you know, interior damage, um, personal property damage, those those sorts of things. On hail claims, you know, maybe a water spot on the ceiling, maybe a grill cover, you know, that kind of thing. You know, patio furniture gets a hole in it or whatever. It's not going to be a huge number of contents, but it can it can still take time. Um, and if you you know. As, as far as everything else goes, I would say, um, as you get better at this and as you, especially doing hail, hail's I think the best thing to learn on because it's super repetitive. You're probably in a lot of the same neighborhoods. You're probably meeting a lot of the same contractors if it's door knockers, right? Um, you can kind of start to build up some muscle memory and build your chops up, right? And start to, to start to identify places in your workflow where you can spend less time right? Doing X, Y, or Z. If you're finding that when a guy's up on a roof with you and you're missing all the photos on the back slope, um, it's because you're he, 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 making sure that he, he, whatever his needs are, is kind of a priority over your particular workflow. Um, I would, I'm, I'm a nice guy, right? And I, I will, I've never like, unless I was, you know, if, if, losing my temper or whatever, for whatever reason, I don't yell at contractors or fight with them or anything. Um, if they're like, you know, right at my shoulder and they're pointing at every single thing, I'll say, you know, let me do my test square here. Um, just, just give me a few minutes to do this. And then we'll, we can kind of pick up, you know, the questions that you have at that time. Right. Um, that what do you do if they've already drawn a test square? Do your own test square. Don't don't okay. use their test square. Just do it. Use just do it. Test. If there's enough room on the on that slope and it still has a nice view of the sky, the right direction the storm came in, I'm gonna do my test square somewhere else. Um, I if if because sometimes, and as you know, do you do, doing roof sales in the past? Um, maybe you've seen guys do this, but they'll go around in their test square and they'll like dig their thumb and like really dig into a spot. Well, this looks like a good spot. You know, I'm, I'm just making sure the adjuster sees it, you know, you're digging in there right? <laughs> and then they circle it. I'm not counting. That doesn't count as a hail hit to me. Sure. Um, so I'm going to yeah. do my own test square. Um, I'm, I'm going to let the person know, I'm going to say, you know, I have no problem you using my ladder. I have no problem you being up here on the roof with me. You know, we could chit chat or whatever, but I've got a, a systematic way that I'm going to inspect this roof. And when I get done, We'll talk about what I came up with, right? And then, you know, 
just start doing your thing. So, and, and yeah. that the, the thing that, that saves for me, for saves a lot of time is to, is to have that systematic approach to scoping, whether it's a roof or the elevations or the interior or an outbuilding or whatever it is. So uh, and specifically on a roof, I'll say we've got a hip, right? And it's maybe one story or whatever. Um, on the front slope, I climb up and I'm gonna look at the front slope, right? I'm going to, the very first thing I'm gonna do is get an overview shot from one side, looking out this way, and then I'm gonna walk over to the other side and get an overview shot looking the other way. So I get the whole slope. There's not any part of it that can't be seen in at least one picture. Um, and that's important because the time when you need, the, the place where you were standing that had something that you needed to take a picture of, you didn't get a picture of it, right? So, and then it comes up and it's a big to do. Um, and I gotta, well, I'll save that for another time. But so I'll get the overview shots, right? And then I'm going to inspect the slope, right? So I'm gonna do, whether it's a, if it's a wind claim, I'm gonna count, you know, broken tab or, you know, braided creases or missing tabs or, you know, pull throughs or whatever it is, count those. I'm going to mark them with chalk all the whole entire slope. And then I'm going to get photos of that. If it's, if, if it's a hail claim, do my test square and then get an overview shot of the test square, get a, a medium shot with two or three hits in there. And then I'm going to get a couple of close ups, and then I'm going to get pictures of the accessories, right? Whatever accessory, you know, it's, turtle vents or skylight cladding or whatever it is. And all that stuff that's on there, it's going to get a picture of it in, in the estimate, especially if it has damage. I want to, you know, I can get a shot of like five vents and then get a shot of one vent saying this vent's damaged or it's not damaged, right? All the vents look like this. And then I'm going to go to the right slope and do the same thing over again. And I'm going to take, while I'm crossing over from the front to the right, I'll take a look at the ridge, get a couple of, if there's some ridge hits on there, I'll get, pictures of those make sure you get your, your 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 pitch and your shingle gauge and whatever else they want right. to have on there um and the key thing to remember no matter what order you do this stuff in on that slope is that you have written down your scope for that front slope right and you also have every picture that you're going to need to take on that front slope some some people will kind of haphazardly go around there. Oh, right, well, the storm came from the south southwest. That's the back corner over there. I'm going to start there. That's the worst spot, right? And then they'll they'll do test squares or whatever, and then they'll uh, start taking photos in some other order, right? I know that if I get distracted, if I'm in if I'm in the middle of the back slope, I've already got the front and the, and the right slope photoed, you know, and scoped and everything else. I'm on the back slope. Um, I can kind of pick up where I was at and I don't have to like guess. Did you know that there is an adjuster school out there that has a full catastrophe property claims deployment simulation that you can sign up for for training? Let's talk about this. Veteran Adjusting School in Sedona, Arizona is just such a school. As a licensed vocational school, Veteran Adjusting School trains you to become a complete insurance adjuster. When you graduate from the Voss trained insurance adjuster program, you are ready to begin your exciting new career, whether as a daily adjuster or as a cat adjuster. Listen, there are many outstanding adjuster schools out there and you've got to get trained somewhere. Voss stands out among its peers for the depth and breadth of its program, which is a six week catastrophe deployment simulation complete with claims assignments, insured interactions, real damage that you can scope, as well as its continuing support and mentorship long after graduates become working adjusters, all of which provide a significant advantage to you. I mean, there's truly nothing else like it. Go to adjustertv.com slash VAS now and chat with an enrollment specialist who will answer all of your questions and help you decide if VAS is the right choice for you. Again, go to adjustertv.com slash VAS. It's, it's, it's still a it's still a little bit of a guess if I get distracted, somebody phone rings and it's, you know, family member has a problem or something, you've got to answer the phone. Um, but if, you, if you're systematic like that, by the time you get back to the front of the house, you have all the photos of the whole roof, right? In order, right? So they're perfectly in order. Overviews, overview of damage, <clears throat> medium shot of damage, close up of damage, accessories on that slope. Then you go to the next slope, same thing, overviews, 
overview of damage, medium shot of damage, close up of damage, roof accessories, all the way around. And then you you do that same thing on every outbuilding that's you know that's there, every building that's there. Um, if you've got somebody like tagging along, um, one thing I might do is like I'll, I I may if if the person's insistent and I'm getting up there and you're looking and you're like I don't see a whole lot. I mean you can. Truth is, you know within the first like couple minutes whether of you're buying a roof or not. Um, it's 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 either super obvious or it's not. And, and with plenty of exceptions, right? I mean, and you're still going to always do a full, complete. You're going to look for it. If if you're like, ah, I don't know if I, I can't really see it coming up the ladder. I didn't really see it on thinking on downspouts or whatever. I'm still looking hard for it. I really want to. If sure. it's there, we're getting it right. We're going to take care of it. But if you got somebody that's if you're skeptical and you know that you're going to need to spend extra time, then I'll say, all right, well, let's do this. Um, let me look at your test square, and I'm going to look at everything historical. I'll take pictures of it and it, and you know, I'll, I'll put a line under it or something like that, like a mark that's that I know later when I label the photos, that's the contractor's C. That's his, yeah, C or whatever it is. Um, and then I'll, and I'll tell him, I'll say, you know, this looks, you know, it looks like you found some hail damage here for sure. Let me do my own test square real quick. Um, or, you know, I'll say, okay, this is interesting. Let me do my own test square real quick, right? And I'll do my own test square. And I'm going to look at every single tab. I'll start at the lower left and work row by row by row by row and it's to be fair to the homeowner um to be sure that when it comes if it, if it opens up for a reinspection later that you really really looked hard for the damage and if you have to say no then you say no and i, I will generally speaking i'll do that and then do the rest of the roof right um I don't know. It just depends on the guy, I guess. Um, sometimes those guys will like, they'll want to argue about stuff. And, and I'm like, I still have to scope the rest of this roof. Um, but generally speaking, um, what I will do if I don't find damage on that front slope or whichever slope it is, like the worst damage slope, like you may want to go to the worst damage slope when you meet a guy and he's being real contentious and he's saying, well, that guy got, I got, we bought that one and you guys bought that one and you bought that one, da, 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 right? You've heard that. Um, I, I, well, I'm, I'm looking at an inspection tomorrow with the homeowner that basically said exactly that. Like, you know, uh, all my neighbors got new roofs. I don't understand right. why, yeah. why, why they're denying mine. Look hard, look really hard. And if you see stuff, you know, if you're like, I'm, that's a hail hit. I'm pretty sure it's a hail hit, you know, if it's a hail hit, if it's pay for it, you know, if, if, it's, if it's there, it's there. Um, Cause it may be the first guy missed it. Um, it could be, you missed it, right? I've, I've gone back out on my own claims. Sun was at a different angle. It was overcast or not overcast. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how did I miss this? Sure. There you go. See you on the next one. Right. Yeah. Not, not even making a big deal out of it. Just, you know, so, you know, it's being systematic, having a, a workflow that you repeat over and over and over and over and over again um, is is pretty important because you as as you build that muscle memory you'll just be you'll be moving faster uh without m moving faster so in other words you're not running you're just taking less time to walk there right um and then same thing goes for the for the elevations on the house um a lot of people you know spend a lot of time on photos like how many photos would you say you're taking like average per claim? So from a, so my trainer, my mentor was basically had that cat mentality, right? He's like, look, if you've got more than 60 to 80 photos, then it's, you're, you're, you're slowing everybody down. You're slowing yourself down. You're slowing the reviewers down. We're trying to get the cats are all about volume. So he's saying like, you know, you shouldn't need more than 60 to 80 photos. Uh, to tell your story um with dailies it's different i'm being told like 140 or you know 200 photos is not you know and to me that's just i that's excessive i'm i'm doing i would say on average uh i mean i'm looking at here's one that i uploaded from this morning i'm, I'm looking at 52 photos you know, it, it was a small, simple gable roof for a hail claim. Um, it's maybe 1,800 square feet, single story. There was, I think, no damage to the uh, to the elevations. Maybe one one screen or something, but it, 
Yeah. I think, in fact, that one actually was a, a no hail damage, that first one. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm on the one hand, I'm being told take more photos, uh, but uh, I, I'm not, like I said, 60 to 80 is probably average. If it's a bigger house uh, and there's a lot of damage, then I'll probably say closer to, you know, a hundred or more. Sure. I would say, so it shouldn't matter if it's daily or cat. I, I think it, I, honestly, I, I think you should just take the number of photos that tells the story of the claim. And okay. if you have light damage or no damage, you want to take probably, you know, some extra photos on, on claims like that, because you want to, you want to give the, the desk adjuster who's going to get, you know, who's going to have that one. If it pops up again, give them a lot of stuff to look at. Right. But, right. but I think your mentor is right. You know, you, you don't want to have like, Let's say, for example, a typical hail claim, roof, gutters and downspouts, two elevations of siding, and four windows, right? Um, on a claim like that, you've got a couple of overview shots. Maybe you have five shots on the front slope. It's, you know, gable. So you've got 10, like, critical photos for the, the roof, right? If you're total in the roof. This is all damaged stuff, right? You told the story. Maybe it's 12 you know a couple extra like if you see like a really juicy one and you want to put it in your archives and you're like that's a really awesome you all want to put that on instagram or whatever um gutters insurance companies do not care about gutters they just it's not i can't tell you as of have, having been a file reviewer and d doing desk claims you get claims in from field adjusters and there's a hundred pictures of the gutters right the gutter, the, the most expensive gutters are going to be like $2,500, right? Okay. So get, I would say one or two photos of the gutters from the top or the bottom. If they, if you get the lights shining on them, just right. You can see the dimples, get a couple of shots of that, you know, show one or two shots of downspouts, five max on gutters. I'm not. Right. I have in all the claims, the thousands of claims I, I did, I, not one time did I ever have anybody kick a file back and say, "Hey, Matt, can you get some more photos of gutters, please?" I never happened, <laughs> right? So now we're now we're up to we'll say seventeen, eighteen. We'll just say twenty photos, just to be including the, the risk photo and the address verification. We look at the side of the house, um, aluminum or uh, we'll say vinyl siding. It's got some chips on the, the front and right side, or the, the the right and the back side of the house have chips in the the, the siding, right? So you got to corner to corner overviews from one side to the other side. And then I've got, you know, my siding profile. And then I've got a couple of shots of damage on those sides. And I may, be, I may pull the siding out to get a shot of like some builder board or some fan fold insulation behind that, right? And then four windows. That's 50 pictures, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, what, what else are you taking a picture of, right? If there's if there's no outbuildings there's no there's they have like a chain link fence nothing's wrong with it no deck no personal property nothing no interior damage nothing else right why do i need 200 photos i don't i mean for now i'll right. say for a water claim maybe if you have a five thousand square foot house and they had this much water it was all one level and they had this much water through the whole thing yeah you're going to take a lot of photos on that but you're not going to take like a whole bunch of extra photos you know it's going to be say the guest room one side or the other side overview shots you know get a, give me pictures of what's what's damaged that's going to be that we expect to be damaged in this claim and if there's something that's that you think we want to know about that wasn't damaged get a couple of pictures of that but right you know but you got the the walls the molding the maybe the bottoms of the doors the flooring if you pull peel back the carpet or if it's gone you know, is there a pad under there? Is there, you know, a subfloor? Is there whatever, right? Get those mm -hmm. photos, but don't get like five photos of baseboard in one room, right? That's a common mistake that people do. It's, it's multiples right. of too many photos of the same thing, right? That's right. Take the pictures you need to take, but don't take right. a bunch of extra thinking, well, I'll just throw a whole bunch of, people say that. I threw a bunch of extra in there just in case, you know, they wanted to 
see more dents on the same downspouts. Downspouts total if I got one dent on it, right? Those are those are some things I would say, you know, that kind of would help to to speed things up a little bit. I, I think as far as like what your mentor was talking about, um, that's kind of a unique situation where I th I think that you're there are a lot of adjusters out there that that do scope all day long and write all night and they crush it. They do great at it. And they can do that. They they live on you know, monster energy drink and coffee, and they know that they're going to work for three weeks on the cat, and then they're going to go home and sleep for four days and then get back to their normal sleep schedule or whatever. Yeah, I'm just gonna I, I can't. I can't either. I, on Ida, yeah, on Ida, he was, he, he's a little guy. He's a live wire. He's 60 years old. He's playing two games of pickleball a day. Like, he's just go 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 he can run on three hours of sleep that's normal for him he's up at three o'clock every morning and i'm like I, I do that for two days and i'm wiped completely yeah. you know i would say I can't function you know for for people who are because this these kinds of opportunities come up that's not the first time i've heard about somebody that does that kind of thing they'll they'll you know a, a regular adjuster like if you went on ida by yourself you would only work for one carrier and you would make sure that everything that you inspected that that day you close that by the end of that day you wouldn't do more okay. than you could close that day if it was one then do that right so you go, go scope it label and Im import your photos and then go to the help room right if your brand spanking new and then make sure that the help room person understands that you're not leaving there until you have this this claim closed right and then if that file needs to come back for corrections you know, the file reviewers will have a chance to look at it and you probably get it back the next day. You can look at it and say, oh, I, you know, you, you, you do one the next day, right? This is what I tell everybody. If you're brand new, you've never handled claims before and you get thrown on a hurricane, do it that way, right? And always do it that way. Like for through your whole career, always only scope which you can, you know, you can reasonably close the same day. When you got somebody that's like, they've got three firms that they're running claims for and they bring on a bunch of students to help them you're basically not to and i don't not to like impugn you know motives or whatever but there's a little bit of a conflict of interest there i think when you've got somebody who's a mentor teacher but he's going to make money off of your volume um i don't know that that's i wouldn't personally recommend that anybody train that way or go on their first cat event that way um, you may you, you certainly could learn a lot but at the same time um you're i mean i guess if his if it's just his name on the files you might not it totally... wasn't actually because we had our licenses so it would actually he they would go to us and our names were on the files but oh, okay i think what it was what his his He's a good guy. Um, I think where I saw the value in, in learning from him was the idea that you could do that kind of volume and produce the good file. Uh, and I think the other thing that I found was that he had the contacts in the industry, right? So he had sure. multiple IA firms that he could talk to, say, hey, I've got a couple of new guys that are trying to get into the business, you know, send them, send them files in their name, here's their exact net address. And I will trust that they will do a good job because I will be helping them. I think that's kind of how it worked. And so yeah. um, it's a business model. So, uh, and I just, I would, I would put it at that. It's not like we were the uh, first class. <laughs> ah, so he was, a, you guys were the R and D class testing it out. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think that there's a lot of people out there that, and again, I mean, more power to them if they can make it work, but, th but they will try to like figure out a, uh, an end run around to try to like hack this to where they can make they think they can make more money um, i think you know if, if somebody's doing it in such a way where he's giving you a lot of exactimate training and then you guys you get on a deployment and then he's like helping you that's you know sounds like it wasn't a, necessarily a bad deal i agree with them um on the volume absolutely 100 percent um on dailies you're only going to get so many claims a week you might get a spike here and there um but 
on cat you you do have to make hay while the sun shines but the, but the, the the thing is is that you have to still turn in a high quality file it's got to be a good file otherwise your career is you know if you're fast and you're like your work is crap those people work because there's not enough adjusters right so they the the, the i firms and the carriers will hold their nose and call that guy and he'll come and he'll make a big mess and then you or me we're doing cleanup fixing whatever you know train wreck that guy cost um and generally speaking you know the people that are really fast are missing damage and so they're underwriting their claims um and but they're still getting paid they still get paid that's what sucks there's a lot of that, things that, that suck about this industry and that's one of them and and so when i talk about closing claims closing only what you can reason or inspecting only what you can reason reasonably close that day and you know when i first started i got started with state farm through pilot and they made a big deal uh, about closing on site they were like they it was they're relentless about it and so they they had wow. trainers on site on my very first storm and for about a week 10 days i went they were state farm trainers they were people that were like just they just went with me on all my claims they showed me how to set my schedule up it was the some of the best training i've had on the job that i've ever heard of um and i had that gone to veil awesome yeah i'd gone to veil and gotten like adjusters the, the three-week adjuster school thing um but they were like listen man you know the your customer service numbers your quality you know your uh your cycle time your volume your career is gonna be is gonna it's gonna be better if you close on site right and at mm. first you know they and the, their caveat was is that the minimum the minimum uh important label your photos just get those in there mm. so that you don't forget because you're going to forget. I mean, you think, oh, well, you know, it's, I totally remember that guy's house. It was pink and he had a Corvette in the driveway and trampoline. Dada. Everybody's house looks exactly the same. Now I've got a Corvette in the driveway or, a, you know, a, a Tahoe and a Jeep and a, you know, a trampoline in the backyard. And you go into the same neighborhood and all the houses are the same color going up the street and they're the same floor plan and everything. You're going to forget the, the minimum important label of your photos while you're sitting there in the driveway doing that. Don't do that inside the insurance house because they will talk to you and distract you they may come out this is one of the benefits to writing on site they may come out tap on the window hey matt you know what you asked me if, you know when you first got here uh if we had any damage to the inside and I, I didn't think that we did but but we were my wife and i were looking around and we looked up in a linen closet upstairs and there's a water spot up there is that can we put that on the claim heck yeah and jump out grab my camera get a photo of that get, you know the two by two little closet run back down anything else you know and then run back out to the car add that in right i just picked up depending on who you're working for you can sometimes you can bill extra for interior damage right and then it and it it adds trades it adds you know money to their estimate which can kick you into the next fee the fee schedule uh tier if you're sitting there at the house um you know the other benefit is is that you're you don't have to schedule calls like settlement calls right if you if you're if they're having you settle up with the insured because you did it on site right you already went through the whole lesson i haven't run event. into that yet what were they they want you to do settlement calls or not uh i've never settled i've never worked for anyone that uh, like where we have authorization to settle okay. on site yet okay yeah so that's even that's even easier <laughs> yeah thomas listen to me so <laughs> if i if all I had to do was scope the loss and write an estimate and then turn it in and tell the homeowner, well, you see, you tell the homeowner, you know, well, a desk adjuster will be in touch with you and they'll go over the everything's. That's it. I'm writing those on site. That's man. it. If, Seven if to you, ten business days. If you if you do two a day, you want to get there at nine and just sit in the driveway until it's done, and then upload it and wave by and just drive away. Go to your next one at, at twelve or one. And then at the end of the day, you know, go home and not have a bunch of estimates to write up. I think you'll find that, uh, you know, you, you find ways to kind of like put all this to, to tie it up with a little bow. Um, you can focus the mind by sitting in your car, right? 
you, there's nothing else going on. There's no, nobody's making dinner. Right. There's no dog. It's got to be taken out. There's no trash. It has to be taken out. It's you just, you in the car with, you know, music on the radio, right? Just doing, doing your thing. Um, if you can't do that, I would say, and I did this a lot in, in the, the latter years, especially on doing daily stuff. Cause the, a lot of those you can't close on it's like day, like big water claims or fire claims. Um, I would go not home, but I would go to Starbucks or some coffee shop that had good internet and I would put my headphones in and I would sit there and I would hammer away at that stuff until it was done. And then I'd go home and leave my laptop in its bag, right? Whether, even if that was nine o'clock at night, you know, I'd be like, honey, I'm going to be late. You know, I'm going to grab dinner on the way home or can I bring you something for a late dinner or whatever? Um, and then I, I just wouldn't take it home with me. Mm. Right. Um, but if you, if you give yourself, you know, if you're getting what, well, how many claims a week are, are you think you're getting? I would say probably right now, like surprisingly, um, it, the, the pace has increased to probably about 10 to 13 claims a okay. week. Yeah. Um, I would, this is what I would do. And if I was you and I was feeling like you're working a lot of hours and you're, you know, 10 claims, that's two a day. If you do, you know, Monday through Friday, if you work on Saturday, you know, it's up to you. You can do that if you want to. Um, I've got I, two inspections tomorrow, not by, yeah. not by choice, but because that's when they that's said when they, they could do it. The only time yeah. they said they could do it. Um, I'm going to, to try to build because, because I closed on site and I found so much value in it. Um, if I was starting over, I would be, and I didn't know, like it was a whole new system and I couldn't, I didn't know it. Um, I would spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to close these claims on site because, because you don't have those extra phone calls and you don't have, you don't have to go back into the house and spend 15 minutes explaining your settlement, handing them, I mean, I don't you maybe have to hand them like handouts or whatever, but yeah, I mean, I mean, that's like a third, maybe not a third, maybe a fifth of the whole time it should take to do a claim is gone, right? So I would, I would put a lot of focus and work into just say, you know what, make your schedule to where it's like, you've got plenty of time to do this. Um, sure. Do, do one at nine and do one at one, right? And just yeah. see, just try it, you know? And then you find, like, again, without any distractions in the car, except for occasionally the homeowner come over and knock on the window, which you want, because you want to be able to get all that damage. Um, I don't know. I think you'll find that you're, and you're not having to print out the estimate. If I, dude, <laughs> come on. <laughs> so much. So it's, it's, that's like the, uh, an ideal gig. Cause that's a big piece of it. The settling up and printing and, you know, doing all that stuff. Um, I would give that a shot and I would say, you know, if, if you're like you, you, you do your one at nine o'clock and then you have one set for 12 and you're pushing up against that one and you're not going to be able to, you're sitting there trying to write it up and you can't do it, then close your laptop, go to the 12 o'clock. And then after you're done with it, you write up to 12 or just take all that stuff to the Starbucks right after you finish, you know, scoping your, sit there and put the, the photos in while you're, I'd stay in the driveway for a few minutes at least go to Starbucks and then finish writing them up. Right. And try that, you know? Yeah. I like and that then, because I think it, it, go ahead. Push, I was just going to say, I think it, it, that not coming home because sometimes once I'm home, it's like, okay, I've got, don't I, want to do I it. can breathe easy. I got all the time in the world when really, no, I would rather not be doing this. I'd rather be yeah. downstairs watching a show with the wife or whatever, having yeah. dinner, you know, together. Um, so yeah, I can see if doing it in the driveway or the truck or at Starbucks, someplace else that prevents me from going home. Right. It's that, yep. that pressure that I need to actually focus and get it done here. I have a lot less focus. The cat comes in and, you know, whatever. Right. Yeah. Distraction. Yeah. That's so, that. I would say the, the, the biggest takeaway from, you know, this whole thing that I would give to you would be to try to find a way to, to, to do the work and is minimize distractions as much as possible. You know, however you do it. Now, 
you know, that would be if nice. you are given, say, you know, three or four claims hit your queue, uh, and the guideline provided to you by the carrier is, you know, you have, of course, 24 hours to call. Uh, and we would like you to have the inspections completed within 72 hours of, of receiving that file. Um, that kind of puts a limit, I guess, on, you know, if, if you're, if you're spacing them out, say at 9 AM and or 12 or one, uh, that's two a day done and uploaded, uh, but I could see it starting to possibly back up if it's not, I mean, I, I've, I've went ahead and scheduled them for the following week, either because my calendar was already full right? and, you know, or whatever. But so I'm already at that point, I've just made the decision to screw the guideline and say, I'm going to do it when I can do it. And right. that's it. Sorry. You know, um, well, I would say if you're if you're able to get up to four closed claims a day, which is a, mm. a good a good baseline on a on an actual big cat like a, a hail deployment. If if your minimum mm. if your your floor is four closed claims a day, that's you know that's twelve claims in seventy two hours. And then that's four closed that are not being kicked back for revisions, right? I mean, well, that's the idea. Ideally, may, yeah. Yeah. Ideally, you're going to want to, you know, it's it's this is it's all part of it, right? So, in other words, you're you're you've got a goal now, right? So they say, you know, we want you to have these done in 72 hours. They're probably not going to fire you if you if you if you're going if it's 86 hours or whatever, 12 hours. On they haven't yet. <laughs> right. So if you're adding a day or two or three to your cycle time, it's just a metric. It's an opportunity for improvement, right? So I would say the more you create a systematic system for, you know, process for scoping and you just let the guy know, right. You don't let the insured follow you around, you know, one guy is going to want to get up on the roof with you. There's always that guy. Um, but you know, and that's fine. It's his house. He can do whatever he wants to, but you, you know, I would just, you know, reduce distractions there. Just let him say, Hey, listen, you know, I, We'll, we'll go over all this stuff once I get done, but let me go ahead and do the scope the roof here real quick and then we'll regroup and we'll, I'll answer your questions, right? So you, you get a lot, you get the roof done, do the same thing on the elevations um, so that you're not missing photos, which is a huge pain in the rear end because, you know. Absolutely. You got to go back out and get them, you know, or whatever. Um, or you miss, you, you, you didn't get a photo of the back slope and so you don't know how many vents are back there or you forgot to count them or whatever it is. Um, and then, um, try to only, you know, scope what you can write that day and just, you know, try it on one. I mean, just, you know, do your normal thing, but you know, give yourself three hours on one of them or however long, if you add it up, the time it takes you to scope and the time it takes you, you think it should take you to write without distractions and give yourself that window and then sit there and ensure the driveway and write it up, um, and see what happens. Um, again, I think, Reducing distractions, getting your brain focused, really, you know, laser focused on writing your claim and wrapping that file up, doing the diary, doing your, your invoice, doing all the stuff you got to do to close that claim. And when you leave the house, you could go to Starbucks or you could go home and just hit upload and you'd be done. Right. You wouldn't have to like, there's not an extra thing to do at home. Like, oh, I'm just going to do the invoices and all these claims. You already did it because you were sitting at the house and it's part of right. your like, I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this. It's like first, second, third, fourth, fifth gear, right? It's just, you don't even think about it. Um, it's just, I think at this point for you, it's a function of building speed and and really trying to like be uh, conscious of where you can build efficiencies into your workflow and having a, a structured, repeatable, you do it the same way every single time workflow. Oh, and I think that you'll find that you're slow as smooth and smooth as fast. Yeah. I've heard that. Yes, exactly. Um, and then I want to know how it's going. So, you know, definitely keep me up to date on, uh, okay. on what you, uh, if, if you're finding improvements, if you, if you find that you think I'm completely full of it, <laughs> which 
could be possible on the contrary <laughs> on the um, contrary I, definitely let me know and and uh i i want to i want to get your feedback on you know that and and again you know we've got a, a email you know conversation going so if you do have like further questions that we can jump into beyond this sure 100 uh, no, i i really is, appreciate what you do matt yeah no problem i mean this is this is my wheelhouse is like the speed building the speed thing because it's the job's not really worth it if you can't like do a, at least a do a lot of claims right but not not sacrificing quality so but man thomas i really appreciate it um thank you so much for coming on and and uh i it's it's always nice to be able to talk to the people that you know i get emails from like see your face uh and and hear kind of like you know the things that, that are the sticking points it's it's uh so i hope hopefully this was helpful for you very much yeah awesome. i appreciate it thank you very much matt and uh, i'll continue to watch the videos that's my virtual ride along and right on uh, right those on. are awesome this is adjuster tv